Okay, our last speaker today is also on Google Hangout, um, Chandler McWilliams. All right, hi Chandler. Hello everyone. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, hi. I wanted to uh, give a talk on how to be an ally, but I can't really give that talk. So this is not a talk on how to be an ally. Um, it's a talk about trying to become one. Um, for those of you unaware, an ally is uh, someone who wants to support the struggles of a marginalized group that they are not a part of. So feels compelled for whatever set of reasons, um, but they're not, they're not in that group. And that puts one in a particular position um, when, when trying to participate in politics of that group. Um, my background is this. Um, well, I wasn't in this band, but this band had a <laughs> profound effect on me um, and really shaped a lot of the my my young budding politics uh, when I was a preteen. Um, and those, those politics kind of stuck with me for the rest of my life. And so a, a lot of that life is about trying to figure out how to unpack this and make it into an ethics that, that I can live every day. Um, so here are a few things that I've learned about being an ally. Um, this is the first and the most important. Um, for those of you who are too timid to unpack the abbreviation, I'll do that for you. Um, this uh, particular point was put to me very well, um, not directed at me, I, I have to say, by a, a woman that I work with now in the Design Media Arts MFA program, who likes to talk about this as uh, one of her uh, opinions about working with with white people, she's a woman of color. Um, and what I think is really important about this comment uh, is that she finds it very frustrating that it often uh, alienates people, and pushes people away, people get very angry. Um, but what's important here is that it's not a metaphor in the sense that it doesn't mean go away when you say that. It means just stop talking, don't give up, don't decide that you don't care, don't think that you're not welcome, just stop moving your lips stop making sounds, uh, and start listening, because that's really the best way to contribute. Um, in a, a great YouTube video on how to be an ally that I recommend you search YouTube for these, um, there is an analogy made between trying to help your friend build a house when you've never built a house before, and you just show up and start hammering things because you don't really know what you're doing. Um, so don't do that, just listen. Um, and this particular point always makes me think of this uh, Whitman quote about convincing by presence. Um, and, and really the importance of being present as an ally, uh, but not, not, not particularly trying to contribute your own voice. So being present and listening uh, puts you in a particular position where you can think of the, the privilege that you have being put in the hands of the marginalized group that you want to support just by being there, just by listening. Um, another important point, of course, um, is don't get defensive no matter what, ever. It's really not about you at all. Um, you'll frequently, if you go on the internet, and Tumblr in particular is kind of uh, bad about this, you'll encounter a lot of people who are skeptical of your commitments. Um, but before you speak up, before you react, before you do anything, just ask if the skepticism that you're facing is deserved. Um, not even deserved of you in particular, but perhaps in general, if this is a, lo a reasonable position uh, for someone to take. And then ask if what you're about to do is going to support the cause that you believe in, or if it really has nothing about nothing to do with it, because in this context that, that is really all that matters. And then of course the important thing also. Um, Another important point here is this. Um, this one may be less familiar, but I thought the coders in the group would appreciate it, um, which is to read the manual. Um, I, I think it could be interesting in this context, I guess, to take this term away from the uh, programmers who like to throw it around on forums um, and try to think about how this particular uh, phrase may be thrown back when dealing with issues difference. Um, so in this context, it's about doing the work. It's about uh, finding text, blogs, videos, lectures, the vines, the tumblers, reading them, thinking about how they apply to your life. Reading the blog posts and going to 
walk, uh, thinking about situations you find yourself in, things that you take for granted, and thinking about ways that maybe the thoughts of others can, can destabilize those. Um, some, of course, the most important is to think about privilege um, and really think about it closely. Not uh, consider it at an arm's length, but consider ways that you have privilege, how you use it, what you do with it, um, and what it means if you are a person of privilege um, to try to be an ally. How is that privilege is interfering or supporting what uh, you believe in? Um, and then, of course, something that seems so obvious, but it seems so often missed. Um, is just simply that pronouns are powerful. When you're giving lectures and you're trying to teach a programming concept and you're talking about a programmer who developed something, um, just use P. It's quite simple and it has an amazing effect. I've done it for years with my students and many of them come up to me and talk to me about it later. Because it's such a small thing uh, that, that shifts the way the conversation happens and, and brings other personalities into the, the forum. Um, the language really does matter. And there was a, a backlash, of course, with political correctness, but um, we're kind of past that now. We're far past that now. And it, it's OK to consider language and what your words do. Um, so then kind of moving from here, we've got uh, all of these anti-racism, anti anti-sexism, anti-capitalism, but then an exhaustive list of um, some of the potential positions that have come up just today in this panel. Um, and something that's important to me personally is that these particular um, concerns don't, other than the capitalism, anti sexism, anti racism, they don't necessarily affect um, a larger structure that we find ourselves in. We have to consider here and not be content with just critiquing. Uh, the status quo. Um, there is this term uh, from Mark Fisher, the philosopher, political uh, philosopher, um, called capitalist realism. And it's important what capitalist realism is, is the notion that our world has been structured so completely by capitalism that we are no longer able, able to imagine ourselves out of it. So this crops up a lot in um, encouraging women and people of color to learn program so that they can very quickly go to Silicon Valley and app and make money and contribute. Um, those politics are not my politics. Um, and I think it's important for people to at least consider where they can on this issue and to consider how we can possibly think these terms into these terms and try to consider what happens when um, we get through racism, when we get through sexism, um, when we've overcome capitalism, what kind of world will we find ourselves in? And trying to put a lot of thinking to imagine what that world would be like. Uh, one temporary school of thought that's trying to do that is called accelerationism. Um, closely related to luxury communism, or sometimes more entertainingly called fully automated luxury communism. Uh, and the idea here is that we are quickly facing a future which will be post-scarcity. Um, we will have automation of so many tasks um, that we need to start considering whether or not the jobs that are invented away through automation, uh, whether those people are just going to starve, what we're going to do with the surplus population that has nowhere to work, but work to live, um, and the opportunity that I mean, like acceleration offers is that we can take hold of the capitalist machinery and try to accelerate technological progress and put it to the uses of humans and environment and people. That we can actually make the world that we have a world designed for living in. Um, and so I think that we're in a particular moment here where bringing in a marginalized group this project programming into technology in particular uh, is going to be, as, as Phoenix mentioned, vitally important to in this future, to deciding what kind of world we're going to be in. Um, so uh, I suggest 
looking into accelerationism. Um, one of the interesting points there is, is the thought that uh, capitalism goes through phases um, where you have innovation, but then innovation gets caps because there's a long period of trying to monetize what has been invented. Um, and it, that innovation is no longer put to the, the human purpose. Uh, and so we're at an opportunity where we can do that. Uh, and then one final thought from all of this is to always and always try hard. Uh, thank you.